<laughs> the future the future of civilization is in your hands exactly exactly and thank you so much for well what you teach me how to program well not well not to program but you know what i mean absolutely only only uh, the best <laughs> words only the most powerful words but well again thank you so much for that um and and do you think when more people will raise their child well how do i say mm, well so sometimes my english isn't as mastered as yours of course bruce but um uh, well in a mindful may in a conscious way conscious that was the yes, word i'm sir. looking for uh, do you think that will change the world in the end yeah a hundred percent yeah one hundred percent because people's lives are just running by programs now yeah and the programs that we've got have been over the centuries programs of disempowerment oh you don't you can't do this and you can't do that and blah 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 and everybody oh, so i have no power and yeah. everybody is a creator so um if they're great creators the question is why are they not creating that that beautiful life mm -hmm. <laughs> and the answer is the programs they have are the limitation yeah. that prevents the world from expressing itself if people had their power this world would turn into heaven on earth overnight mm -hmm. because everybody wants the same thing to be happy and healthy love. yeah you know peace no violence but you say in a certain way and and for me as well uh well kind of new for for several years in the in the in the spiritual world in the self-development world and it was always like okay shut off your mind think about nothing meditate and and you say the mind is the architect yeah uh, okay the, the first thing is the biggest false belief that has made people victims mm -hmm. is the belief that genes control the character of their lives yeah. because the simple reason is this if you buy that genes control the character of your life then you're saying a I, as far as i know i didn't pick the genes mm -hmm. I, if i don't like the character i can't change the genes and then you're told that genes turn on and off by themselves and that makes people say my health is controlled by genes and i do not control my genes so i'm a victim yeah. that's the program okay you, you once told a, a crazy story about an adopted child who uh was in a family when there was a way where there was cancer yes and yes. they and they picked up the cancer so that wasn't the gene thing because they were adopted it was like a program thing this is, let's, let me give you a fact that makes people go, and here's the fact. There's not one gene that causes cancer. There's no gene that causes cancer. I say, <laughs> yeah. What, yeah. what does that mean? I go, there are two words in English that get confused. Mm -hmm. One is causation, cause which mm -hmm. means something activates, okay? Uh, uh, and the other is uh, English word correlation, which yeah, means the, connected the link. with, yeah, okay? Yeah. yeah. So what we call cancer genes do not cause cancer. They are correlated with cancer. The cause of cancer is lifestyle and stress. Yeah. As a matter of fact, let's just start right here. Yeah. 99% of the health crisis on this planet has nothing to do with genes. 99% is stress and lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And the point about that is those are factors under our control. But then the belief system doesn't, the, you know, the belief system sells you're a victim. I'm a victim. Yeah. I'm a victim. Oh. You believe yeah. it. Mm -hmm. And then you say, help me. <laughs> yeah. I need help. And I say, yeah. there's the problem. Because you will buy somebody else's opinion to, for your life because I'm a victim. They know. Yeah, yeah, go, yeah, yeah. Who are they? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and they are the ones that have taken away our power. 
But in a certain way, I'm always like a critical guy um, and, and a lot of respect. I, I haven't introduced you quite well, but I will do. And, and of course, people know you and we all read you. They are in Dutch, but we read your books. Uh, and I know, but that's a belief as well, I think sometimes, that stress is bad for you. If a lot of people uh, are, oh, stress is so bad, stress is so bad then it is bad for me my new rule is stress well it's good in a certain way if you take a cold shower uh hey, you, you, do you do you know where i'm getting to a hundred percent so okay. now there's actually uh there's actually uh two words again one is distress distress the other is called you stress e-u stress e-u stress mm -hmm. so what's the difference yeah. Distress breaks you down. Yeah. New stress builds you up. I go, what? I go, exercise is stress. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay? yeah, yeah. But it's, it's not to kill you, it's to make you stronger. Yeah. Okay. So there are, are stressors that encourage us to get stronger, but there are stresses that challenge our health. So yeah, that's yeah. why the word stress gets confusing sometimes. So let me just uh, clear up. The stresses I'm talking about are distress, stresses that threaten you or threaten what you want in your life. Yeah. And, and that's where all of a sudden there are different kinds of stress. I go, no, but I'm glad you, you mentioned it because uh, as, as you uh, will probably uh, know, and, and, and I hope all of my listeners and viewers, that to look for the discomfort is is pretty good. You train yourself, and and that's 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 a nice thing. But there is a kind of stress, the bad stress you were talking about. Sometimes we have no idea that we're stressed. It's just like all the pulses from the phone, and and I mean, and you feel quite well. But that's the stress you are talking about. Yeah, it's called the lifestyle stress. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, and the idea is. Some stresses come to your attention very quickly because they're very dangerous. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 you see a gun, that's going to that's gonna yeah. cause you stress right there, yeah. okay? Yeah. Um, but there's some stressors that are not, not that bad. You know, it's like, uh, oh, I wanted to get this and I can't get it. I'm stressed out. And I go, well, that's a different stress. So there's mm -hmm. uh, stress is a whole yeah, range yeah, yeah, of it's, stress, it's, it's, okay? Yeah. yeah. Basically, let me, if I would summarize the easiest thing, stress is when something gets in the way of what you want. Yeah, yeah. Okay? Uh, I want this, I can't get it, that stresses me, okay? Yeah, yeah. Now, there's a difference in stress. Uh, I, I, I wanted to get that hamburger, I can't get it, it's like, eh, okay. <laughs> or <laughs> I wanted yeah. to uh, save my career <laughs> and it's going wrong, I go, that's a whole different stress level. So yeah. that's why there's a range of illness and a range of stress, and I'm talking really only distress. I'm encouraging, I'm encouraging you stress. I'm encouraging, take care of your health, do your exercise, be busy, keep, you know, push, push on your system to do something. Because if you don't, you're telling your system, well, I'm finished. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. Uh, you want to really use well. it. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's a yeah. phrase called use it or lose it, okay? Fine. Well, here's yeah. the point I want people to understand. It applies to every system in the body. And the biggest cause of dementia <laughs> is lack of use of the brain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to train it as well. Yeah, so basically, yeah. we're dealing with health issues on this planet right now. People want to attribute them to, oh, my genes went bad, you know, the oh, system yeah. broke, and I go, less than 1%. Yeah. And I say, because th that takes away your attention, because you focus on that little, oh, yeah, the genes yeah. did it. I go, that's a, that's a small little piece. You yeah. didn't focus on, hey... How's your life? <laughs> yeah, exactly. How's your neighborhood? How's your yeah. family? Yeah. How's your job? Yeah. The, these are these are the th sources of the stresses that we have, okay? So I say, what's different? If the genes or the body is broken, that's out of your control, okay? 
in one sense. But <laughs> if it's lifestyle uh, and stressors that don't that don't have to be there, mm -hmm. that is our responsibility. So all of a sudden I say, well, then the healthcare crisis is 99% our responsibility and 1% the, the, <laughs> the mechanism. And I go, so why are we in this issue? And I say, because we are programmed. Yeah. And we are programmed to lose our power. And the, when you lose your power, you start to live like the victim. You become the victim. It's and the only, issue yeah. is... Uh, that uh, this is passed from family to family. So I say, no, genes don't cause cancer. But if you're raised in a family where cancer is running in the family, then you can get a cancer. I go, well, the genes didn't do it. I no, say, no, no exactly. programming. Yeah. We were all programmed in the yeah. first seven years of our lives yeah. by watching other people and downloading yeah. their behavior. Okay. Yeah. But how do you deal with it uh, yourself, for example, with this magic thing called the telephone, which is more than just the telephone, it's, it's, it, in a good way, it's, it's crazy, uh, we have contact and, and, and we can meet people, but in the other way, it's like uh, stress all the time and uh, notifications, how do you deal with it yourself? <laughs> I don't have stress. <laughs> no, <laughs> but do, but you do have an iPhone or whatever. You you do I have a phone. Even, I don't pay attention to it. I don't pay. Uh, okay. uh, you know what? I, uh, listen, my personal life. The thing that bothers me is the email because that's like a telephone. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, yeah. Uh, and and that to <laughs> me is harder because I have to write, and I'm an old fashioned guy, so I don't write in script, you know, like uh, short no, no, words no. and stuff. I make composition. Okay. Uh, so when I answer an email, it's a it's work. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Do I let the world come into that? No. Do I watch the news? No, no, no reason to watch the news. Why? Because no. nobody cares about what I say. So why should I listen to what they say? <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah, crazy. And, and but do you have? Uh, and maybe you had, and now not anymore. But do you have like a morning routine? Yeah, I wake up these days. <laughs> <laughs> at my age, you know, at 80 years old, you like to wake up and go, oh, I'm still okay. here. It's okay. the whole, another day. Yeah. And, and that's a celebration right there. So it says, oh, I have another day on planet Earth. Yeah. And I start to celebrate. And the point about it is this. If something comes to me and I can do something about it, you know, a request or, you know, I got to do some action and it, I can do it. Uh, it's based on, uh, I'm going to start over right here because this is, let me start over because this makes better sense. You ready? Okay. Okay. Energy is life. You don't have energy, you don't have life. Money is energy because with money you can buy the things that energy gets you. Okay. Okay. Now, if you have a bank account, you have generally a checkbook. And I go, okay, so what? And I say, do you write checks just to give away your money? Oh, hey, I like your haircut. You could have $5. Okay, oh, you have some nice shoes. You can have 10 euro for that. I go, you don't give away your money. No, Why? Not. It's no. your life. And I go, okay, that's physical energy. Biology has biological energy. It takes energy. This is a machine. Yeah. It takes energy to run this machine, okay? So the point about it is this. Are you spending energy that has no return? You go, what do you mean? Well, uh, you get, <laughs> I love it. people get into an argument about politics. I go, so what? They get Waste angry. Energy. They get yeah. hot. Yeah. They <laughs> Anger. I go, you know what? Anger is wasted energy, okay? And I say, so you spent all this energy arguing. Did anything change? Mm. No? Oh, well, then you just wrote a check and gave away energy, but energy is your life. And if you start to look at engaging only in those things where if you're investing your energy, it's like investing your money, mm -hmm. you want something back. Either it improves my life, it improves the life of my family, 
or improves the life of my community, those are investments, okay? But if I put my energy in because uh, the, the stupid presidential election here in the United States with with a jerk, excuse me, I won't say which one, uh, he, oh, I just said it. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. The point about that is that's a stress situation. And you get nothing back. That's a lack of energy. I can energy jump up and yeah. down about politics all day long. I could get angry. I can let it bother me, and nothing comes back. Okay. So then the other thing is this: What about negative thinking? Oh shoot, that can't work. Oh, this won't happen. And I'm thinking like these thoughts. I go, not only are you wasting energy. But the thoughts themselves are manifesting the reality. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, there's yeah. Two, two problems with that one, okay? <laughs> so then you say, Bruce, so how do you manage your energy checkbook? I say, I only invest in things that I have an influence in. If I don't have an influence, then I'm not using my energy to waste it. I don't care. And when you start to look at that, and then you start to take away the things that have been using your energy but have no effect, you know, like yeah. watch the news. Why would I? Why would I want to watch that? You know, yeah. and, and so basically, what my life has separated the things that I don't care about because I got no no outcome if I put my energy into it. Yeah. I got wow, nothing. great! And and well, then uh, let me ask this in in the same way you just explained. So um, you you have a certain amount of energy, you have a certain amount of money, but how do you get more rich in energy so uh what gives energy for example well you i just showed you my daughter which is yeah. well love is like well energy and and like if you give it you will get more so that that's one of the things so my maybe it's a big question but how yeah how do you get more energy The first thing is stop losing the energy. Yeah, yeah, okay. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. Did that, okay? Yeah. Number yeah. two, how do you get more? And the answer is this. Energy comes in waves, okay? And so like when you drop a rock in the water, you get the ripples, okay? Mm -hmm. So those are waves. The energy is shaping the water. You can't see the, the energy is invisible. It's a, a force that makes mm -hmm. the water come into ripples, okay? So... If I talk about energy, just think of the ripples, okay? Yeah. Okay, so here's the point. Everything has energy, okay? And when you have, when your energy is in harmony with the energy of the outside world, there's a boost. It's called constructive interference. I go, what does that mean? I say, imagine I drop two rocks into the water. And the two ripples, which are energy, are coming toward each other. I say, what happens when the ripples meet? Well, if they're in harmony, the ripples add up to a bigger wave, more energy. We call that good vibes, good vibes. You, you, you meet somebody, you feel so much more energy. I say, yeah. why? Because the harmony between them and you is good vibes, yeah. okay? Yeah. Yeah. But there are also something called bad vibes. I go, what's that? Well, remember, I dropped the two rocks but at the same time. But what if I drop one rock, then drop the other rock? And I say, oh, one ripple is going up, one ripple is going down. When yeah. this one's going down, the other is going up. They're out of phase. They're out of harmony. I say, so what? When out of phase waves come together, they cancel each other out. Yeah. Yeah. No energy. Flat We line, call yeah. that bad vibes. Yeah. Bad yeah. vibes. Yeah. You feel the energy in your body. A bad vibe makes you feel vulnerable. A bad vibe makes you feel afraid. Uh, yeah. Going, okay, so what's the point? I said, your thoughts are vibes. Yeah. And if you put the thoughts into the harmony of the world, then the harmony of the world and your energy come together constructive interference more energy love is the highest form of interference yeah okay now on the other side is fear yeah exactly <laughs> because fear cancels energy so the more fear you are in the more you cancel your energy okay yeah. now let me tell you why this is 90% or more of the health crisis you ready Yeah. Mm -hmm. what, 
when you're in fear, your life is threatened in some way, minor or big, okay? There's a threat. Yeah. The biology deals with a threat like it did 100,000 years ago. Block. When the, the threat was a saber-toothed tiger. Yeah, exactly. So I say, let's pretend today's threats are the saber-toothed tiger. And I say, when the saber-toothed tiger is there, what do you need to do to save your life? I go, run, run. I go, so when you're in protection running, mm -hmm. you want the energy in your arms and legs so that you can energize running i need mm -hmm. and i said blood is the energy okay so what when there's no protection like you're living in harmony and balance mm -hmm. and everything the blood is concentrated in your viscera in your gut okay, okay. Yeah, the yeah. blood is in here why maintenance of the body fixing the body healing the body cleaning the body that's the function okay but when you're in protection, you need the blood in your arms and legs, yeah. okay? So when the stress hormones come into the body, the first thing they do is cause the blood vessels in the gut to squeeze shut. I go, why? Because it makes the blood go to the arms and legs. So first thing that happens is when you're in stress is you shut off the function of the maintenance of the body. Yeah, so the but whole put, immune system uh, will be blocked. The immune system, the uh, digestion system, yeah. excretions, all yeah. of that off. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Because you got to run. Yeah. And so the blood is now in your arms and yeah. legs. But this is a great thing. What you're saying now, if you have stress, you won't lose weight. <laughs> when, you have, when you have stress before you lose weight, you'll, you'll probably die. Yeah. <laughs> That's, uh, you know? So, okay. So the first thing is this. The maintenance of the body is shut off. Yeah. Okay. Number two, the immune system uses a lot of energy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Why? If you've been sick, you, maybe you couldn't have the energy to get out of the bed. Okay. No. It takes Just repairing, the yeah. immune system uses a lot of energy. So now I say, look, you have infection. The immune system is fighting the infection, but you're being chased by a saber toothed tiger. <laughs> so I say, well, how much energy do you want to fight the infection? How much energy do you want to run away from the tiger? Fuck the I mean, infection. We, we yeah, yeah. If, if the tiger catches you, the infection is not going to bother you anymore. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so here's a, a fact. There's a fact. Stress hormones shut off the immune system yeah. to save energy yeah. to deal with the first threat, the tiger. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I said two things now. You shut off the growth of the body, growth maintenance. You shut off the immune system. And now I'm going to give you the third one. Stress hormones cause the blood vessels in the forebrain, thinking brain, mm. to squeeze shut, just like in the gut. Yeah. Squeeze shut. I say, why? Because that pushes the blood to the hind brain. I go, what's that? Reaction. Reflex. Yeah. I go, why? Instinct, yeah. Thinking is very slow. So when you're under stress... The hormone shuts off the thinking and gets you ready to run. Fight or fight, reflex, reaction, no thinking. Okay? So I say, now what's the third thing? First, shut down growth of the body. Second, shut off the immune system. Third, shut off the intelligence of the body and become reactive. Okay? Now I say, why is this important? When it was only to run away from a saber-toothed tiger, you had to shut it off for 10 minutes <laughs> as you run. Mm -hmm. If you get away, no yeah. more threat. No. Everything comes back to the way it was before, growth, yeah. not protection, okay? Yeah. But today's world, protection is every day, all week, all month, all year. And I say, what? That interferes with the growth of the body, the immune system of the body, the intelligence of the system. I go, that's the basis of the entire healthcare yeah. crisis yeah. today. Yeah. You're going to do a show uh, here uh, in a neighborhood in, in Belgium. And the title is How to Live in Harmony with Ourselves and with Nature. And 
well, you were talking about this uh, for a while, but but of course we will go see there to to get the answer. But maybe you can give a sneak peek how to live in harmony with ourselves and with nature, well, and not the, to stress. <laughs> okay, uh, the basic thing is maybe we have to change some of our beliefs, and there are about four beliefs that have to be changed. Okay, belief number one. People believe that genes control their lives. As we mentioned, that makes you a victim. Yep. And if you're a victim, that means you're powerless. And if you're powerless, you will buy somebody else's truth. Yeah. If they say, I'm going to save you. Yeah. Be it a church, be it medicine, exactly. whoever you pay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, you, you gave up your power, okay? Yeah. yeah. Because it turns out your consciousness controls your genes. And so... Um, uh, almost all diseases because consciousness is off, okay? Number two, we believe that the uh, conventional belief the universe has matter and energy. It's two separate things. Matter, physical, energy, not physical. I go important point of that belief. Matter affects matter. Energy affects energy. Mm -hmm. But matter and energy don't talk to each other. I say, so what's the point? Well, that means consciousness, which is energy, is counted as not being important. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. That spirituality, which is energy, yeah. is not counted as being important in a world of Newtonian matter energy, in a world where the body is physical and the only way to heal it by science is put medicine in that body. And I go, yeah. that is one of the biggest causes of death is the yeah, medicine. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So, number two is, no, the energy is quantum physics energy. The universe, everything is energy, and all energy interacts. And a matter of fact, I'll give one quote that is the most profound quote from Albert Einstein. You ready? The field. Uh, the field is the energy that surrounds yeah. us. Yeah, yeah. Okay? The field is the sole governing agency of matter. Okay, what does that mean? The invisible energy field is what shapes what we perceive as matter. I say, what's the invisible energy field? And I go, consciousness and spirituality. And that is current quantum physics, okay? So it says we got to change that belief because people don't understand their thoughts are creating not just their biology, their thoughts are creating the world that we live in, okay? That's number two. Was, number yeah. three and four come from the same problem, Darwin's theory of evolution. Yeah, that's the whole thing. Darwin's survival of the fittest uh, story. That's completely wrong because science has recognized that uh, it's actually the survival, and I made up a word, fittingest. The one that fits <laughs> the best into the environment is encouraged by the environment to be there. Yeah. Those that are destructive of the environment, the environment will eliminate them. It's like we are being like viruses on the planet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're destroying the. And ecosystem. you say that's a false belief. We we are not made for that. We are we are harmony. We're supposed to be gardeners. The Native yeah. Americans said they were gardeners in a garden, a garden uh, that we came from. Listen, a garden is not a battleground. It's not a war. No, no, a garden no. is community. Yeah. Everything that's what makes a garden beautiful yeah. is yeah. harmony and community. Yeah, okay, Bruce, but in a certain way, uh, of course, we eat animals. So it's it's like a that's battle balance. Well. There's a balance in the, yeah. a balance in the environment. But when if I get to, I got so many wonderful things to say here. Yeah, yeah sorry. Uh, yeah. So let, let's put number one. Survival of the fittest is completely wrong. It's the ability to adapt to the garden. Yeah. Okay. Do and you can be because I, I couldn't find it, uh, but I heard you once say uh, uh, the whole uh, the Darwin story. Uh, there was a guy, a Frenchman. I I still remember Jean, Jean Baptiste de Lamarck. Exactly. Lamarck was the first person to write a scientific theory of evolution 50 years before Charles Darwin. And today's science is exactly what Lamarck said. Lamarck said, it's not heredity that controls us, mm -hmm. it's consciousness that controls us. 
He said that the ability for our evolution is to adapt to the environment where we respond to the environment and adjust our biology to fit the environment. Now we've adjusted our biology to destroy the environment. Oh, yeah, cut the rainforest down. Make more (laughs) hamburgers. I go, okay, here's the problem. Uh, People don't know this. I'm going to mention it now. The newest understanding is 90% of the energy that we require for our life, you ready? Mm -hmm. Comes from the atmosphere. Yeah. We're like plants. Plants take sunlight very specifically and turn it into energy. We have the equivalent of like chloroplast in our skin. Mm-hmm. It's a pigment called melanin. Yeah, pigment. of course. Yeah. yeah, we know it for sleep. Yeah. Okay. Well, no, no, no that's mel- that melatonin. Oh, that's melatonin. Oh, sorry, sorry. Melanin. Oh, the meloma. The oh, yeah, yeah. It's pigment. Okay, yeah. the pigment. Okay, it's a crystal. What does it do? It downloads energy from the environment, and 90% of the cell's required energy just comes from being in the environment. That's just like plants. Yeah, 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 exactly. That's evolution. What, think yeah. about it. Why would evolution put at the top of evolution an animal that destroys the rest of evolution? That would be stupid. The higher okay, up, but you were in the top four. Sorry for this. Uh, so, uh, number three was... The survival of the fetus. Survival of the fetus, number four. It was yeah. the same. Again, uh, the theory is based on random mutations uh, that alter and then the organisms change. Mm-hmm. Random mutation means by chance, okay? There's a new science, uh, and it's associated with epigenetics, yeah. that says the mutations that alter our biology are not by chance. They're by adaptation that we didn't get here by accident, chance. We got here by purpose. I go, what do you mean? Every organism introduced to the environment has a greater power of keeping harmony in the environment. And we're at the top of that chain. And if we were practicing like Native Americans and being gardeners, then the planet would be lush and growing, okay? Yeah. Yeah. But we're being destroyers of the garden. Yeah. And this is why the idea, we didn't get here by chance. There no. was a purpose. We were here to keep harmony in nature. And we are the ones that are disturbing the harmony in exactly. nature and causing a problem. And Mother Nature is threatening us and has told us we're facing an extinction unless we learn to, le- to live in harmony. If we don't learn to live in harmony, then the human civilization is facing a very oh, yeah. drastic yeah. future. Well, and then it's good as well because well, nature is winning. But I, I, yeah. But you mentioned uh, several times science, and how do you deal with this, Bruce? Because um, just before we went to this interview, uh, well, like I said, I'm a big fan of your books, and I was, I was thinking, oh, maybe he won a lot of prizes. I should know. So, uh, okay, I, I went to Wikipedia, which is like a... <laughs> yeah, you're laughing, and I well, great, you're laughing. But there is like, oh, right, this American writer who work has been dismissed by some peers at pseudoscience. <laughs> uh, there isn't... I, I love uh, it. You know when that came in there? No. When I started to speak against COVID... Ah, okay. The government put pseudoscience, anti-vaxxer, yeah. because they wanted to dismiss who I am. My work is the absolute pioneering science that <laughs> was associated with the science of epigenetics. Yeah, exactly. 23 years before epigenetics, I wrote papers about how environment controls our genetics. Mm-hmm. And it took 23 years before science recognized exactly what I was saying in 1990, and I did the research 1967. So the point is this. Everything I said in my research, everything about the nature of environment controlling genes, everything about the nature of adaptation, everything about the nature of evolution, which is not based on genes, uh, Mm -hmm. has a scientific foundation to it. Yeah. 
Yeah, and but that, I this it. is this. I stand by it. Yeah, I just oh. know the the powers to be did not want others to talk about anti-vax information. No, is and that the whole like, thing? Yeah, but but what I uh, and I'm dealing with this as well in a, in, in in a small way is this whole polarization, like or it's science or it's spirituality, and I think yeah, they, no. <laughs> you can live with it together. They are exactly the same. This yeah, is where you the, say they're the same. Okay, epigenetics and quantum physics yeah. connect, and in that connection, that it's now recognized by quantum physics, mm -hmm. spirituality is what shapes our existence on this planet. It's consciousness and spirituality shape our planet's existence. And it's in a paper in the most prestigious scientific journal on this planet. It's called Nature, the journal Nature. Yeah, yeah. An article by a quantum physicist in the U.S. at a big university. The article was called The Mental Universe. The conclusion, uh, and, uh, and before I'm going to give you the conclusion, but you have to recognize quantum physics recognizes that atoms aren't made out of physical particles. Atoms are made out of energy vortex, like tornadoes. Okay, yeah. So atoms are not made out of matter. So now I'm going to give you the last sentence, the most prestigious scientific journal, and the last sentence is: the universe is immaterial. It's mental and spiritual. Live and enjoy. Amen. And that is <laughs> yeah. from the most valid science yeah. on this planet in the most prestigious scientific journal. And I say, what's the point? We are bringing spirituality back into this. But you don't want to talk spirituality? No, no, no exactly. But how do you talking. deal with that? Because there are a lot of colleagues of you or, or former colleagues who are in the... Well, uh, yeah, the, 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 the science, and uh, well, nothing wrong with science, as you say so. Uh, there's no, a lot no, of... no, I said four things are wrong with yeah. science. <laughs> okay. I said genetics, physics, Darwinian theory. No, okay, exactly. That's wrong with science. Yeah. So how, how does it affect us? I'll tell you right now. Mm -hmm. In the Journal of the American Medical Association, that's the Medical Association in yeah. that journal, and in the British Medical Journal, both of them have research articles that reveal in the United States, medicine is the third leading cause of death. Yeah. The first is heart condition, Second, cancer. The third has a Latin name, so people don't understand it. It's called iatrogenic illness. I said, what does it mean? Illness as a result of medical treatment. Right. Okay, that is the third leading. And I'm not saying that like Bruce is saying that. I'm saying the Journal of the American Medical Association said that. The British Medical Journal said that. So... Let's, why is that relevant? How come medicine is the third leading cause of death here? And I go, because the scientific foundation they're practicing from is wrong, and it's based on healing with pharmaceutical drugs, when energy healing is the way it's always been done before medicine got here, yeah. and has to come back in with an understanding of spirituality. Why? The fear of death is the greatest fear any human can have. As a matter of fact, there's no animal that has a fear of death except us, okay? The fear of death causes us to be afraid. And when you're afraid, you give up your power to somebody who's going to protect you. And I say, because we believe that the end is the end. And I go, no, no. Quantum physics and epigenetics reveals that we are a spiritual broadcast playing through a biology television. You're watching the Bruce show right here <laughs> on this TV. Yeah. I go, why is that important? I say, where's Bruce? Oh, he's an energy field. 
that's being picked up by receptors on his brain cells like antennas. And I'm downloading Bruce into this machine. I say, when we watch a TV, and if the TV stops working, we say, TV is dead. Yeah. I go, but when the TV died, is the broadcast still there? Yeah, exactly. And the answer is yes. yes the and the human is. body is the TV and spirit is the broadcast. So the bodies come and go, but the spirit's always here. And if an embryo shows up in the future with the same set of what are called self-receptors, mm -hmm. self-receptors, antennas, if a body shows up with the same set that you have, and listen, no two people in the whole world have the same set of no. these receptors. Not even twins, no. no. You are downloading a vibrational frequency that we can call a field or we can call a spirit. And that download is coming into the body, and this is a virtual reality suit that gives us an opportunity to do creation, and experience. And that's what, what we are doing right now. Yeah. Like? Yeah. What does a sunset look like? Exactly. What does music sound like? Yeah. A body translates that into the vibration that goes back to our source. If the body dies, the source is still there. And if an embryo shows up with the same receptors you have right now, you're back in a different TV. Okay. Does it oh. make a difference if the TV no. is male or female? No. Nope, that's the TV. No. Does it make a difference if the TV is white, brown, black, red, yellow? I say, no, that's the TV. Yeah. We are the spirits playing through TVs. Yeah. And all people, spirit came from the same source. Yeah. And, and, and only people? What do you think about that? Like, well, uh, a plant. Uh, an animal, uh, okay. it's uh, energy as well. Yes. Everything has an energy pattern. That yeah, is okay. So here. that are televisions, radios. Uh, Everything got a pattern. If you want to see a pattern of a plant, you can put it in a CAT scan and it will show you the energy of a plant. Mm -hmm. Everything is made out of energy. The scan systems in biology, MRI, CAT scan, yeah, yeah. they don't read light. They only read energy fields. Yeah. yeah. So when you see a scan, you go, oh, my God, all the body parts have energy fields. I go, yep, each body part, each vertebral bone, each muscle has an energy field. Okay? Yeah. yeah and that so, takes us back to the energy world. Exactly. And that's the world we live in. Well, but you well, uh, also went to the end of the, which, which I don't want because... I always talk about death in the end, and you just explained with the whole television thing how how <laughs> no you think it works. Death. But before no, but 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 before before we go to that, um, I don't know if you have think about this, and, and but uh, I always ask my guests if they can mention three books that were really helpful in their way as a as a human being. Um, so I don't know if you still read a lot. I don't know when you start. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I have to keep up with the changing world here, but I love it because I'm head of the conventional understanding of biomedicine because I was, for 23 years, I understood this mechanism, even though science didn't. Didn't. <laughs> no, exactly. so my research went further and further and further because I didn't stop. No. And so, uh, you uh, know, I, I feel very what are, what are three books for you that, that are, well, uh, always will be on your bookshelf? And maybe well, something to uh, read again. <laughs> there, there's, there's a book called The Cosmic Code. That was the first book on physics by Heinz Pagels mm -hmm. that I read that I finally said, oh, my God, quantum physics is so different than the physics I learned in school. Yeah. And all of a sudden, it brought the whole world of energy I into my life, okay? Um, right. uh, I Albert Einstein, any damn thing that guy did. <laughs> uh, he, he was the most brilliant, down-to-earth spiritualist that, that I could ever imagine, okay? Um, a book that I hope people would read mm -hmm. is, is a book called Dying to Be Me by uh, Anita Morjani. Anita okay. Morjani. Do you know that book? Yeah, well, I know her. For, uh, is she 
like uh, the black woman who uh, had a, uh, how do you say, a BDE. Uh, the, the, she, she was for several minutes dead, or is she dead? No, no, okay, no, oh, no. Oh. No. This she's a, a, a Anita Morjani comes from an Indian heritage, grew up in Hong Kong with Chinese mm -hmm. in the background and all that. Yeah. Uh, she had cancer, and she really had cancer <laughs> to the extent four years of working with oncologists. Yeah, on the last day of her life, supposedly, she was on a machine to help her breathe. She was so skinny. The cancer lumps were sticking out of her body. You could feel the cancer lumps, okay? Yeah. yeah. She goes into a coma. Her doctor says, that's the end of my cancer patients' lives when they go into the coma. So he said, call the family and tell her she's, she's, going, she's going to be dying right now, pretty soon. So while she was on that table, she had out-of-body experience. Mm. And she went to where people go, out of body, to an energy place. Everything is energy. Yeah. Yeah. And she found out that the reason for her cancer was she thought she embarrassed her father, who she really loved, because she was Indian and she was supposed to get married. Uh, you know, they set him up, uh, prearranged, and she backed out the day before the marriage, and the family was so, you know, all the people criticized her and the family, and so she felt very bad about all this. Mm -hmm. She met her father's spirit when she was out of body, and her father said, no, you know, uh, I love it, the father said, what happens on earth stays on earth. <laughs> it doesn't go up with you out there. And said, oh, the love was always there, blah, 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 blah. Then she had a choice. Uh, she said, you know, because her body was racked with this cancer, she had a choice. You want to stay here where everything was beautiful and harmony and energy was so great, or do you want to go back? And she saw her husband... Uh, who was holding her hand, and she said, if I don't go back, he's going to get sick, and I don't want that. So she said, I'll go back. She wakes up from the coma. <laughs> she was there a long time. She comes out of the coma, and guess what? She doesn't need the machines anymore. Then what? First thing she says, I want some ice cream. And then they go, like, Whoa. you know, she's supposed to be dying. It turns out the system started working again. That she just started with a new thinking of uh, how the energy and the thoughts and the spirit all led to the cancer. She changed her thinking, changed her point of uh, how she experienced life. The whole idea was this. Within two weeks, there was no cancer to be found in her body. Wow. All the cancer disappeared. And that was years ago, and she's a very healthy woman at this point. And I say, what? She came back from the very edge when the oncologist said, this is the very end. And she came back with a different consciousness, a different spirituality, a different energy. And the cancer disappeared within two weeks from her life completely. And I go, why is this book important? For me, <laughs> yeah. it's the biology of belief in a personal story. Yeah. Everything the biology of belief is about is an expression of the personal story that Anita writes about. So uh, that's why the long explanation, why that book to me yeah, is important. Yeah, well, I understand. And, and this is, well, in a certain way, uh, what you wrote in The Power of Belief, that, uh, of the biology of, of belief, that, that, well, it's all, we are just self-sabotaging systems with our limited beliefs. And, 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 but this is this is the thing. This is the thing. How can we stop playing this program? Because, well, uh, like I said, I hope I will do like conscious parenting with my Josephine, <laughs> but she will have programs as well, and maybe some limited. The, more so than more so than you think. I'll tell you why. Uh -huh. Science has recognized that uh, we got programs for seven years, and we downloaded them from other people. So. Parenting, you were a baby, you were yeah. parented by your parents, you were programmed how to be a parent by being parented. Exactly, 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 yeah. Uh, okay, so I said, but that's in your program, okay? But I say, your conscious mind's creator mind. 
when that's running, you are the creator. Mm -hmm. But it only works 5%. Yeah. I say, why? 95% of the time, the conscious mind is thinking. I say, so what? Well, if it's not, if it's thinking, it's not looking out at the world. Thinking is looking inside. I have a thought. It's inside. So when you're thinking, you're not engaging with the world. But the subconscious programs like autopilot, it's, it will step in. Yeah. I go, so what? Then the behavior you're playing when you're thinking is not you. It's not your wishes and desires. It's the program you're playing. So you say, I'm going to be a conscious parent. And I say, good, 5% of the time you're going yeah, to remember exactly. that. And yeah. 95% of the time you're going to be playing the programs that you got raised up with. But in a couple relationship, that's where you have an opportunity to change the program because when you're playing your programs, you're the one that can't see them. A story I told for 40 years. You Bill. have a friend. You have a friend. You know your friend's behavior. You know your friend's parent. One day you see your friend has the same behavior as the parent. So you say, hey, Bill, you're just like your dad. I said, back away from Bill. Why? Because I know what Bill's going to say. and You heard it. He'd say, how can you compare me to my dad? I'm nothing yeah. like my dad. I go, we all Everybody know in the world yeah. can see that Bill's like his dad. Who's the one that can't see it? Bill. Why? Because he only plays the program when he's not paying attention. So I go, and then you want me to make the conclusion here, and that is this. We are all Bill. Yeah. We are doing this every day. But in a certain we way, Bruce, programs. we're fucked. We're then. what? We're fucked then. No! No! Damn it! Because people, oh, it's so hard to change the program. I say, it's not hard to change the program. You, you have to know how to push the record button. If you don't push the record button, you can't change the damn program. <laughs> oh, there's a mechanism? Yes. And if you understand the mechanism of creating the program, then you can be the reprogrammer of those programs that are limiting you or limiting your happiness, health, joy. You can rewrite all these programs. Easy. As a matter of fact, uh, with one of the processes, Psyche. Psyche, yeah, yeah, I know you were talking about this, yeah. You can, you can change a belief in 10 or 15 minutes or less, actually. And I go, how do I know? Because my life is what it is. Because of Psyche. I had, yeah. Why? I got dysfunctional programming. My father... And my mother had a bad relationship. Mm -hmm. I download my father's behavior in my program. 95% of the day it runs. I don't see it. Guess what? I'm almost 50 years old and I don't have a relationship. Why? Because every time I get into one, my father's program kicks in and they run away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Change the program. Well, I yeah. did. And now I've been in a honeymoon not a short one, baby. I've been on a honeymoon <laughs> every day for 29 years. Yeah, yeah. I wake up in heaven on earth. I live it all day long. I have no anger. I have no fear. I love my life because I've taken the power back that was lost in the programming that you said you can't change. I go, yeah, but you can okay. change those okay. programs. And, and when you do, you're a power creator. Yeah. And is it true? Is it well? I talked. I I have a recording uh, about Psyche, and it's well, it's it's well, uh, great, of course. But um, how do you how do you think it works? Is is it like? I, uh, I'll tell you how, exactly how it works. I said you had to push the button to make the recording. Okay. Yeah. Well, when you were under seven, you were called a super learner. Just you only recording have to do all day. Just one thing, one Conscious spoon, all you remember the yeah. rest of your life, okay? Yeah. Yeah. And you were a super learner because, you know, there's a line down the middle of the brain. They're called hemispheres. The left hemisphere is associated with intellectual. The right hemisphere is associated with emotional, okay? Yeah. When you're under seven, both the hemispheres are working at the same time. So every experience you have has an intellectual part to the experience and an emotional mm. part, okay? And I say, but after age seven, they separate, not physically, but they don't, they're not working at the same time. So for a couple hours during the day, you're more intellectual, then a couple hours, you're more emotional, then you're more intellectual, a wave, mm -hmm. okay? Well... 
if you want to download information fast, there are a couple of other ways you can do this, but it takes a little longer to change programs the other way. Self-hypnosis, uh, habituation, practicing, okay? But energy psychology is a new way of downloading programs in minutes. It's a miracle. It's also, there's a phrase that says, necessity is the mother of invention. Mm -hmm. And today we have a necessity to change the programs as fast as we can because the programs we're engaging in today's world is destroying the planet. So we have yeah. to change. And so the new form of psychology is called energy psychology. In the case of the one I'm talking about, Psyche, uh, there's a process where you physically can integrate the right and left hemispheres just like they were before age seven. And once you integrate them, then you can download a new program over the bad program, rewrite the old program. And how long? 10 minutes. 15 yeah. minutes. Oh, it's Once crazy. You know like I said, you, I had this recording and it's, 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 well, yeah, with, with crossing your arms, it's that whole left, right thing with muscle testing. But my question to you is, do, do you think it's like there's immediately a new program or do you, for example, in your own life, have some times to, well, rewrite it again because of that old program that still comes up or is just the no, old program? No. The, look, The, the thing is stimulus response. Mm -hmm. The program is a response. The stimulus is the same. If I take it and say, just play the program, I'm going to play the program again and again. But if I come in with the stimulus and say, rewrite the program, the original program gets canceled and a new program gets put in. Yeah. Okay? That's super learning process. Okay? How many times do you have to do it? Once. Okay, how fast does it work? This is amazing. Because if you do it for a phobia, let's say you're afraid of spiders. Mm -hmm. We go through the process. Ten minutes later, uh, we, we uh, recognize uh, using muscle testing, the process is now complete. I can bring a spider in right at that moment, a minute after you did this process, put that spider in front of you and you'll have a completely different response to the same spider that you would have had before the change. And I go, so how fast does it work? I say, oh, instantaneously. Yeah, but what if my process is, uh, um, I, I want, uh, you know, I want X. Yeah. Uh, and I say, well, then you have to go out and do something. <laughs> and, oh, so yeah. it's not, you know, uh, you know, I want to be healthy. I'm sick. I want to, uh, I, and you don't program, I want to be healthy. That's bad. You know why? Want doesn't say you've done it. You know, so I say, let's I program. Am. I want yeah. to be healthy. And I program that and I come back next year and I say, let's hear the program. <laughs> I still want, want to be healthy. <laughs> I say, oh, you never said you were healthy. You yeah. just want to be want healthy. To be. <laughs> so, so you could be yeah. sick as a dog, but you have to say, I am healthy. Yeah. And you put that program in. And you know what? The job of the mind. The job exactly. Of the that mind. was what I'm trying to say. You have to believe it, of course. Well, Because that's for the job of the mind. The yeah. job of the mind, will, if the program comes in and the body's not living that program, the job of the mind is to make the program real. So, placebo, I'm sick. The pill, oh, new pill, that's going to heal me. I take that pill because I know that pill's going to heal me. I get better. The pill was sugar pill. Yeah. What do you think healed you? Yeah, exactly. Your belief, positive thinking yeah, yeah. in the pill, okay? Now, guess what? Negative belief has the same power. No see yeah. But it works yeah. in the opposite yeah. direction. Yeah. But this positive is... Positive is... belief, yeah. placebo, can heal any disease. Yeah. Negative belief, name nocebo, can cause any disease. In yeah. fact... Cancer is caused by lifestyle nocebo, mm -hmm. negative thinking and a bad lifestyle. Yeah. Well, uh, and that's no the whole thing. That. We talked about science and all your colleagues, but everybody will say placebo works. That's, that's, 
That's a uh, fact of science. That, yeah, but exactly. that's only talking about positive. Yeah. What but about you, negative thinking? Oh, yeah, yeah. They don't talk about that in the public. No. I go, that's if the public knew it, maybe they would change their mind faster. Yeah. If they knew their negative thought was manifesting their disease. Yeah. But they might change. Yeah, well we'll hope so. And I think I don't know if you if you think as well, but I think we're living in a good time. We uh, things are getting, and like I said, sometimes there's more polarization, and but there's more awareness, more consciousness, and absolutely, yeah. absolutely, it is a great time. And I say, but people look at the universe and go, oh, it's scary. Look yeah. at all the things coming wrong yeah. here. But okay, I, I have to say one thing, and I talked about this with uh, Martina, and I'm glad uh, she invited you for this event in Belgium. Uh, but that. Yeah, well, that's that's also scientific proof. That whole thing with the left and right brain. Uh, well, it's it. I'm not a scientist, but like what 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 I read about it, it it is it isn't true. There are several functions that are connected, and several functions that are specialized in the yeah, hemisphere. Yeah. So if you get, there are other functions that are connected. So I yeah, say, okay. oh, they're always connected. I go, they're not always connected. They have different basic function. Yeah. Intellectual, thinking, reasoning, you know, words, all these things. Art, pictures, feelings, these things are emphasized. They're emphasized yeah. in these hemispheres, yeah. okay? Okay. Yeah. So the bottom line is... <laughs> If we understand the programs, we can change the programs. But to change the programs, you have to learn a technique. And either it's self-hypnosis where you put earphones or earbuds on at night and you play a program you want to be true after you're yeah. falling asleep, reprogramming. Yeah. Hip, uh, that's hypnotherapy, self-hypnosis. Then that's the first way we learned for seven years. The brain was in self-hypnosis. That's mm -hmm. how we downloaded all yeah. the programs. Yeah. I'm After trying now. I'm, I'm 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 curious. What do you think about this? Because because it's about with this whole energy thing. I just uh, received like a little machine with all uh, kind of different frequencies uh, for for uh, several chakras. Yeah, uh, I'm just I'm just trying it. I have no opinion still okay. about it. If you get a chance, there's a thing called radionics. Radionics. Okay. Yeah. Onyx, okay, okay? yeah. They used to have a machine with all the dials in the front and all that. Mm -hmm. And they would dial in a frequency. And uh, it would have an effect on people. But when you looked inside the machine, there was no, there was no electronics. It was just no. dial on the <laughs> no, front. But you hear a sound. It's like uh, sound you're healing. You're putting out a vibration. You're yeah. putting out a frequency. You have an intention. You have to focus the intention to manifest the reality. That's Yeah. Okay, and then you have to, uh, it's not just have the intention, you have to do something. Now, fun part, does what you do actually have to have an effect? No, I could take a pill with the intention, I'm going to heal myself, yeah. the pill would kick it off. If I didn't take the pill, I would just sit here, I, I'd like to heal myself, I'd like to heal myself. It's not going to happen until you did what? Took the pill. Did the pill, no, that was the action, Okay. And the point about it is there's a difference between intention and action. You actually have to do something. If you just think about it, it's a, a friend of mine wrote a book called The Secret Life of Plants. His name was Cleve Baxter. Mm -hmm. I go, what about him? He was a guy that hooked up a electronic galvanometer response, a, a device to read the electrical oh, yeah, yeah, activity yeah. of plants. And the, he was working with this big plant in his office, and he couldn't get the, the plant to make a response. No response, no response. Then he was getting mad. He was thinking, if you don't do a response, I'm going to kill you. If, you. if you don't do a response, I'm going to throw you in, in the garbage can. If you, and he was thinking this, and then he got frustrated because no response. No. Guess what? The moment he went up to throw the plant into the garbage, the electricity of the plant went crazy. I go, what was the point? A thought without action doesn't happen out here. <laughs> A thought that stays inside is like, that's nice. Who cares? Why? Oh, I have to do something. Yeah. Yes. 
Even if it's take a a sugar pill, I had to do something. Mm -hmm. Okay? So the idea is what we have to recognize is intentions are good, but if you don't do an action, the intention doesn't go anywhere. But on the other hand, I will say that a thought is energy as well. Of course, everything is energy yeah, and exactly. the thought. Yeah. But the thought requires, am I going to do it yeah. or am I just going to think about doing it? That's the difference. Yeah. The movement yeah. is, I'm doing it. Yeah. Okay? Are you thinking just about... Here, what's that? Sorry. Are you thinking about uh, writing another book? Yeah, but I'm so, so busy right now. Uh, and, and it's a book. I love it because... Uh, it's a very bold move on my part. I said, <laughs> yeah. what is it? The theory of evolution written in the context of the cell membrane and environmental signals and not genetics, a theory of evolution that challenges Darwinian theory and gives a scientific mathematical, a mathematical foundation for evolution. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, well, of, you've, you've once said the cell membrane is responsible for managing environmental right. influences. So uh, if I expand on that and show how it works, why it works, put the quantum physics in there and the history, and then you can understand why, how evolution occurred, even the evolution of our civilization. Mm. There's a path. You can see it. Once you understand the key, the rest of it is like, oh, my God. It makes the whole rest of this thing one giant picture. Yeah, great. And uh, um, uh, do do you have, because... Yeah, I'm just curious about your your own uh, well story with this, uh, and 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 well, you 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 wrote about this in your books, of course. But I, I'm curious: have you ever tried uh, well uh, truffles or ayahuasca or or things to to? Yes. 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 Okay. Okay. I did psilocybin mushrooms. Yeah. Okay. After reading reading a lot of information on them. And it's interesting because in, in the medical school, the books about diseases and, tr- and drugs and things, mm-hmm. uh, the only thing they had uh, in regard to psilocybin mushrooms was wonderful words of, this is really good. <laughs> there was no, in the medical book, in that definition of what this is, there was no negative word, negative consequence. But it, what it did is it took away... Uh, it, it took away uh, us as being individuals and gave us an experience of being environment and evolution, okay? And I learned a lot. I didn't do this as a kid. I did this after I was a professor in a medical school, okay? Oh, wow. So I had a lot of data in my head. Yeah, and but then... when I took the psilocybin, the data, I said, oh, my God, and it opened up. Uh-huh. It opened the doorway to the world that I live in today. Wow. And do you still have any other ambitions besides, well, your knowledge? And I'm, I'm, I'm glad you're still doing this, Bruce, because you could also say, I'm just, well, with my wife uh, on a honeymoon and, uh, and, and, and well, uh, sitting, uh, enjoying the sun. And, uh, but, but you're still on stages. Uh, and, and, and uh, I'm, because I'm st- I want people to wake up because I've been living for 29 years, heaven on earth. I live honeymoon every day, yeah. heaven on earth. And the fact is, everybody can have it. In fact, most of them, when they fell in love, even experienced a short period of having That's it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the reality is, that honeymoon was not an accident. It was a personal creation. Mm-hmm. And if you understood how you created the honeymoon, then you can understand how come you could have it your entire life every day for as long as you live, which I'm working on right now. Yeah. I said it again when I started with this, the mind is the architect and you can create whatever you want. And and that's, yeah, well. Um, So you're not afraid about that. Uh, We we talked about this. Uh, You're like a television set. But there will be a time this television set, as I'm seeing right now, is not working anymore. Uh, How old you uh, will be, you think? From my original spirit energy? Well, no, no, no. That's endless, of course. No, like the television set I'm watching right now. This this one? This one, yeah. 
Well, it, it's 80 right now, but yeah. I don't have an intention to end it because, as I said, the more you understand how to live in the beautiful planet that we that we came from, the more that I can get people to understand the fact that I live by and that is this. People have been told if you have a really good life, you can go to heaven somewhere after you die. And my, ha my vision is 100% different. My vision is you were born into heaven because this is where you are a creator. And yeah. you can create what you want or you can create what other people told you to create. And I'm creating my life now from what I want. And I am living the creation of heaven yeah. every day. Yeah. And how long will it last? I have no idea. But what the last day of it, when I get finished, I'm going to say, thanks you very much for this opportunity to have this experience because yeah. I'm going back to the energy field, but I sure love the chocolate. <laughs> and the <laughs> <laughs> Well, you will go to another television set. So uh, your yes. broadcast is always there. Yes, uh, and absolutely. this broadcast will always be there, so that's great. Um, and and how do you want to be remembered, Bruce Lipton? Happy guy. Happy guy. Just that. No, I'm you're just a happy guy. Well, I'm you so are happy. a happy guy, Bruce. But you you gave us like the human race much more than just being a happy guy. Well, if I'm trying to show it, how can they become happy guys? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Last question, because yes. you, 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 you're such a great inspiration, but sometimes I think, is he still like a human being? What are the parts you are dealing with that you think, oh, I can work on this, I, I can grow on this, because sometimes I will make a bad decision or doing, a, eh, well, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, I, I started to realize I wanted to lose weight, and I understood that the uh, reason for our early death, because we're supposed to live to at least 150, mm -hmm. is uh, the biggest leading factor is eating too much food. <laughs> so uh, I, I have been cutting back and cutting back because most of the energy, as I mentioned earlier, that we require actually just comes out of the atmosphere like electromagnetic energy is downloaded by the melanin in the yeah. skin. And it says, I'm eating too much, but I say the world is eating way too much. And the world's eating so much is killing them and destroying the planet at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. So the idea is to reduce the input as much as I can because... Uh, it, food is for fun more, <laughs> more yeah. than for need, uh, okay? Yeah. And uh, we've been addicted to food so that, oh, yeah, I have to, breakfast. I wake up. It's time for yeah, the yeah, breakfast. Yeah. Lunchtime, I'm busy doing something. Oh, it's 12 o'clock. I am now going yeah, to yeah. eat. And it's an emotional thing. It's like, well, the gut is the brain as well, of course. So we, we, are, we, are, we are fucking it in a way uh to, to to get rid of the emotions or or, or the real feelings yeah it, it's just basically uh, getting happier and healthier is my effort okay yeah. because i recognize this as a machine to me a, a most fabulous machine in the universe that i can the imagine a virtual, ever, yeah. Yeah. a virtual reality suit i love the suit i want to keep it and keep it healthy so uh, diet is important, not eating industrial farm food, eating organic, natural, biodynamic food, eating, getting close to nature as much as I can, and, and, and loving nature because it is a garden. <laughs> and until we destroyed it, it was the most beautiful garden. Uh, but we are the viruses I mentioned that are destroying the garden, and Mother Nature is going to get even. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Modern yeah, nature is always a, winning. Yeah. Get rid of the people. They're a mess in the garden. Okay. Well, if you watch or listen to this uh, in time on the 26th of October in Brussels, how to live in harmony with ourselves and with nature with Bruce Lipton. So you will be in the neighborhood. Do you bring your wife with you or is she staying uh, home there? She might be joining me uh, uh, for uh, Athens part of my trip oh, yeah. because okay. she's been to, uh, she's heard my lecture a million times. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but she hasn't been to Athens. So she said, I'm okay. going to go with you on that part. But we've been to Brussels and we've had a good time and uh, okay. we've been, we've been quite traveled around. And she's like, ah, I think I'll just stay home and enjoy my life. And so I said, Of course. Okay. Yeah. 
A link in description if you want to go there. Looking forward to that. Last personal question. Uh, I started with my little girl, Josephine. Do you have like a takeaway for me as a parent as well? That you're saying, okay, watch, watch that. Look for that. To the look for that is I saw your child. I've mentioned that your child and the children of this world are the future of this world. And I feel now that my hindsight, my science all come together, I recognize, oh my God, it was that first seven years that determined the character of our life, our health, our happiness, and what we're going to accomplish. There's a book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And it says, if you came from a rich family, yeah, you're going to yeah, stay right. rich. And if you come from a poor one, you'll stay poor. And I'm saying, that was programming, okay? But how about happy dad, sick dad? <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. It's like, okay. why not? Oh, be let's happy. be happy dad. I go, how do you be happy dad? Because all you provide your child with is joy and happiness and love and, and words of inspiration. You're smart, you're intelligent, you're powerful. You just say those. You say, but the kid is just an infant. I go, the machine is downloading. It was already downloading three months before the child is born. Even then, and yeah, it's yeah. downloading everything you're saying and doing because it's a recording device now. Playback, a couple of years, you'll get the playback part. The download is now. So... You Be happy. and all others. <laughs> yeah. Parenting is the pathway for a future that we could thrive into if parents would stop limiting the ability of their children through programs. Thank you so much, Bruce, for your time, for what you're doing. And, um, well, I'd love to see you one day and, and speak to you further. Uh, thank you so much. I appreciate you. I thank you very much for you, the show. And then again, while I'm saying it, thank you for the audience that will watch the show because this is an opportunity to make a better, higher quality, loving existence on planet Earth, also known as heaven. Thank you so much. Dit was Koekeroe. Tot de volgende. Zonnegroet. Hoi.